This episode of Grip Tips is brought to you by Lightbulb Grip. We're back, we're back. I'm Dave Donaldson, welcome back to Grip Tips. Today we take a look at the granny knot versus the square knot. Now, a lot of you already know what type of knots these are because you've been doing them pretty much your entire life and they are very, very common. Uh, but a lot of you will figure out by the end of this episode that you've been doing it entirely wrong. A granny knot and a square knot are actually tied very, very similar, except the granny knot is not as strong as a square knot. Now, before we begin, both of these knots are very, very weak knots. You should never be using these knots when there's a safety concern. Uh, for example, you should never be using them when there's a lot of pressure being applied or if you're trying to hoist things overhead. Now, the reason for this is that both of these knots can collapse when there's an extreme working load. First up is the weaker of the two. It's called the granny knot, which is basically taking the right strand and going over the left and underneath, then repeating the same process again, right over left and underneath. Once you pull the knot tight together, the granny knot is formed, and you'll know that it's a granny knot because the strands will spread out in four directions almost equally. Then there's a square knot, which is similar, but now you will put the right strand over the left strand and dip it underneath. Then take the left strand, which is the one that we started with, and go over the right strand and also dip that end underneath as well. Then you will take all four strands and try to pull them apart, which will then tighten the knot. The knot will form, and you'll notice that the square knot will be entering and exiting two directions as opposed to four directions like the granny knot. Okay, so now that we know the difference between a square knot and a granny knot, which one do we use for which application? Uh, basically, never use a granny knot. One, it's unreliable. Two, if it gets pulled too tight, it can actually jam up and become a pain in the ass to untie. However, the square knot, even though it is also a weak knot, uh, it's a lot stronger than the granny knot. So number one, you have reliability, and number two, you, it's also easier to pull apart, so you also have speed on your side. Now these type of knots are considered bend knots, meaning they bend around an object and they're not used for tie down points like you would with a hitch and they're not used for hoisting things like you would with a loop. For example, like tying a cable to a rail of some sort, I would have a hitch knot for my cable and a bend knot on my rail or permanent structure where position and weight isn't an issue, like tying up a stinger cable for organization like I've shown here. Lastly, and this has nothing to do with grip and electric, but if you're wearing a pair of shoes with laces on them, you can actually look down at your shoes right now and find out what type of knot you've actually created. If your knot has the bow vertical like the left-hand side, you've been tying your shoes wrong and that is why they come loose all the time because you are tying a granny knot. However, if your laces are completely horizontal, you've been tying them into square knots and probably never have that problem. Now, I know that has nothing to do with grip and electric, but it basically has something to do with your shoes. And I think that it's kind of funny because when I was do like kind of doing the research for this, if you actually Google granny knot versus square knot, there's scientific research that went behind how to correctly tie your shoes involving runners, etc. So I'm not gonna go further in depth with this topic. Just make sure that you're always using a square knot, not a granny knot. We've learned the difference between the two now, but uh, now a word from our sponsors. Lightbulb Grip is a lighting rental house based out of Brooklyn, New York, and they're dedicated to the education and safety on all film sets. If you have any questions about on-set safety, rigging, or even gear that you see in today's episode, you can contact them by heading over to the website at www.lightbulbgrip.com. So we will be covering all different types of knots that you can use on a production uh, for the next couple of weeks. But if you like today's episode, please let me know in the comment section below. You can also follow me on my Twitter right here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll see you every week right here on Grip Tips.